Well, hello for you and welcome to your next lesson on logarithms. We're going to be talking about the power law of logarithms today. So our goal is I know the power law of logarithms and how I can use it to evaluate logarithmic expressions. So I'm first going to show you what I mean by the power law of logarithms by evaluating these. And it says here, evaluate each pair of logarithms on your calculator. What do you notice? So if you want, um, it might be a good idea to put me on pause right now and see if you can evaluate that yourself and see if you notice something um, and answer the question, what do you notice? Can you come up with some kind of relationship? So you can put me on pause and do that, but I'm going to carry on and actually show it to you. Um, you would probably get a little bit more out of it if you put me on pause. Okay. Um, here we're going to do 4 log 2. So I'm going to do this all in log base 10 since that's what's on my calculator. So I'm going to do 4 times uh, the log of 2. So I have to press 2 log equals and I get 1.2. So this evaluates to 1.2. Now this one over here, log of 16, evaluates to, so I have to put in 16 hit log at 1.2. Now do you get the feeling like probably all of these pairs are going to be exactly the same thing? Uh, so let's have a look here. This says um, 2 times log 3. So 2 times 3 log equals 0 0.95. So that's 0 0.95. And then log of 9, 9 log is 0 0.95. 0 0.95. And lastly, um, 2 log 5. So 2 times 5 log is 1.39. And what do you think? You think this is going to be 1.39? Uh, you might be finding a pattern here. 25 log 1.39. Well, it's in actually 398 if we're going to be, or 40 if we round it properly. Um, 1.40 here and 1.40 here. Okay, so they are all the same. Uh, what do you notice? We notice that they are equivalent expressions. They are equivalent expressions. Expressions. There we go. Okay, now here's what I want you to notice. If I take this and I go voop and put it up there as a power, I get 2 to the exponent 4 and 2 to the exponent 4 equals 16. How about on the next one? If I take this 2 and I put it up here as a power, I get 3 to the exponent 2 which is 9 which lo and behold is that one there. And if I take this 2 and I pop it up here as a power I get 5 squared which, believe it or not, is 25, and that's the same as this thing over here. So that is, in fact, the power law of logarithms, although we usually use it the other direction. Usually we'll have something that says the log of 3 to the fifth, and we change that into 5 log 3. We pull this down out front. So can you come up with a relationship? Well, I'm willing to bet that that's what's in this yellow box. Here's the power law of logarithms. Uh, log, oh, and that should be base b. This thing is driving me crazy. Log base b of x to the n, log base b of x. Okay, now we've got all this funny nonsense stuff over here. b has to be bigger than 0. You can't have a log of something that's a negative number. Um, b cannot be equal to 1 because 1 to any exponent uh, is 1. So that's not very interesting. And x has to be bigger than 0 because there is no exponent that I can put on a positive number that is going to give me a negative number. And then this says n is a real number. So our exponent is a real number. So that's just putting all these stipulations on it uh, of what these things can be. Okay, now uh, I'm going to prove it for you. And we're going to prove it with base b. So we'll put that down there. It's base 
B. I used base 10, but we're going to prove it in the generic base. So here's how we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to start with this and say proof. Let W equal log base B of X. Well, then by the definition of logarithms, that means B to the X equals, or sorry, B to the W equals X. B to the W equals X. And that's straight up by definition. By definition of logs. Well, then what do we do? Well, I'm going to raise each side to the nth power. I'm going to take b to the w and raise it to the nth. And on this side, I'm going to take x and raise it to the nth. And so that's just raise each side, each side to the nth. Okay, now where do we go from here? Well, um, I'm just going to simplify that. This becomes b to the wn, which equals x to the n. And that is simply um, by use of the power laws. I can just multiply those two things together because of the power laws. And the laws of logarithms are going to be similar to your power laws. Uh, and then I'm going to take the log of both sides. So on this side, I'm going to take the log base b of b to the wn. And on this side, I'm going to take the log base b of x to the n. And that is simply taking logs of both sides. So taking the log base b of both sides. Now that's legit. We can do that as long as whatever we do to one side, we do the same thing to the other. Now, here comes the tricky part here. Well, it's not tricky, but you need to look at it a little bit. This says, remember when I talked about what this actually means, what the, the definition of a logarithm is? This says, hey, what exponent can I put on b to get b to the wn? Well, if I want to put some exponent on b to get b to the wn, that's what it wants. It's what exponent do I put on b to get b to the wn? Isn't that just wn? So that those two things were the same? Uh, and I made that sound like a question, but that is just wn. So we're going to put wn down there. So wn equals log base b of x to the n. Um, and again, that is simply by the definition of a logarithm. And now we want to say, but look, what was Wn to start with? If I take a look at this, um, I know what W is. W was just this thing log base b of x. So what I have here, and it could be wn or nw, what I have here is just n times w, which was this up here, log base b of x, which equals the log base b of x to the exponent n. And my reason for that is, and I'm just going to say by star and I'll put a little star up here rather than writing on it all the time. Um, I'm going to put a little star up here and say by this thing up here. So by star, it equals that. And that is as required. Or QED. We got used to doing QED with trig proofs. QED means, yippee, I'm done. I got what I needed to do. So, what good is it to get to use a power law? So, what use is a power law? Here's some uses. Number one, it can help simplify an expression involving logs. And number two, it gives us a way to get a variable out of the exponent and turns it into a factor. So it turns it into a multiplication rather than the variable being up at the exponent. 
So we're going to evaluate the following logarithms, and I'm going to do this again. I got to take that, and that is a subscript there. This is log base 2 of 8 to the power 10. So we're going to evaluate this in a couple of different ways. The first way we're going to do it, method number 1, I'm going to pull this over here, is we are going to change 8 into 2 cubed. So if I change 8 into 2 cubed, this becomes the log base 2 of 2 cubed to the 10th. And what that turns into is the log base 2 of 2 to the 30th. Now, once again, here we have a base and then we have an exponent that has a base of 2. And remember what this means, and I'm just going to write it a little over here. I'm going to say this log says um, I have a base of 2 and I have to put some exponent on it to get 2 to the 30th. And that's really a no-brainer. This whole log thing just disappears and all I'm left with is what goes in there and what goes in there is 30. So this, the answer to this is just 30. So if you evaluate log base 2 of 8 to the 10, your answer is 30. Now here's method number 2. We're going to use power law. And it's not a whole lot different. Uh, we start with the log base 2 of 8 to the 10. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this 10 and we're going to drop it out here. So this becomes 10 log base 2 of 8. Now remember, log base 2 of 8, this thing is asking us, what exponent do I put on 2 to get 8? And that answer, of course, is 3. So I have the 10 here, and when I get log base 2 of 8, that's 3. And 10 times 3 is 30. And so we get the same answer two different ways. Okay. Uh, so now let's have a look at the second one, and I'm going to do it straight up with exponent laws. This is, or with power law, this says log... Um, that should be base 3, base 3 of the square root of 27. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is write the square root of 27 uh, as a power. So this is going to be log base 3. Hopefully you remember this. Square root is 1 half, so 27 to the 1 half. Now I'm going to take this 27 and I drop it out front. So I have 1 half log base 3 of 27. Now once again, remember what this is. Think about that log. Remember what log says. Log says, hey, what exponent do I have to put on 3 in order to get 27? And the answer to that is 3. 3 cubed is 27. So that means that I have to take 1 half of 3, which is 3 halves if we leave it in fraction form. Okay, now here's an example of how we're going to use the power law of logarithms to solve something like this. Now, before you would have to just sort of do trial and error and say, uh, five, well, I know it's not 5 to the 1, and I know it's not 5 to the 2, and 5 to the 3 is still a little small, so I'm going to keep going up and up. Now, that works fine if t is a whole number. You can do a little bit by trial and error, but if t is not a whole number, um, then you've got an issue. What we're going to do here is take the log of both sides. So we'll say taking log, and since base 10 is what's on my calculator, that's what I'm going to do. So taking log base 10 of both sides. Alright, if I take the log base 10 of this side, I get the log of 5 to the t equals the log of 15, 6, 25. Now remember, I'm not putting the base 10 down there because we understand, it's understood in mathematical circles because 10 is the all-powerful number in our decimal system, is that if I just write down log, we mean log base 10. Now because of power law, this t up here drops out front. So this becomes t times the log base 10 of 5. And over here, there's no exponents to change, so this is just the log of 15, 6, 25. But hey, now t is multiplying log base 5. And to get rid of, or sorry, log of 5. So to get rid of the log of 5, I just have to divide both sides by the log of 5. 
because it's a multiplication and to get rid of them to reverse a multiplication is division so log 5 those are going to cancel here so I'm left with t all by its lonesome on this side of the equation and so on this side of the equation I'm just going to type in 15 that's not a 5 clear 15 625 log divided by 5 log equals 6 t equals 6. Now you probably could have got that fairly quickly by trial and error um, because 6 is an actual you know nice number but in cases where we don't get an actual nice number like the next one here we've got an issue. Now this one we have to get n out of this whole thing so what are we going to do with with this? Well the first thing I'm going to examine this side and see if I can make it simple in any way. Now this n is locking up this bracket, but this 2000 is dividing this or is multiplying this bracket. So to get rid of it, I could just divide this side by 2000 and then it would go away just like that because 2000 is a factor. But remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other. So I can divide that side by 2000. And what I get on this side is 0 0.5 or just a half. And on this side, there's nothing stopping me from writing that as 1.2 in the brackets to the exponent n. And now that I have a number equal to some simple power with the exponent up top, I can take the log of both sides. So I'm going to take the log, and of course it's base 10, but 0 0.5. And on this side, I, and most of the time when I take the log of both sides, I apply the power law at the same time. When I take the log of this side, I'm going to drop the n out front. So I say n log 1.2. And now if I want to get n by itself, I divide both sides by the log of 1.2, and this side by the log of 1.2, and this side becomes just plain old n, and on this side I have to do the log of 0.5 divided by the log of 1.2. So 0.5 log divided by 1.2 log equals negative 3.8. So negative 3.8 doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. What did I do wrong? Log of 5 divided by the log of 1.2. Actually now it makes sense to me. That's the, actually what it's going to be. Um, my original question had another zero here, but since I dropped it, we're going to leave it at that um, and not confuse things further. Next question. Evaluate log base 3, log base 3 of 54. Okay, so if we were to evaluate log base 3 of 54, here's what we're going to do. We're first going to let the expression equal a variable. So I'm going to say let log base 3 of 54 equal x. And then we're going to turn it into its equivalent expression. So therefore, 3 to the x has to equal 54. And that is by definition. Now, if I take the log of both sides, and we're going to get logs back in there. This time I'm going to take it log base 10, just the straight up logarithm of base log base 10. So if I take the log of this side, the x is going to drop out front. And I have log of 3. And on this side, I just have the log of 54. And now to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by log base 3. So I get x equals log 54 divided by the log of 3. So log 54 divided by the log of 3 is 54 log divided by 3 log equals 3.6 approximately. Now what we actually did there, if you take a look at what what that x actually was, um, we find out that if I take um, the log base 3 of 54, I can actually evaluate that by doing the log of 54 divided by the log of what the original base was. Now this is actually called the change of base formula. 
here's the change of base formula. Okay, and I'm going to highlight that. It's the change of base formula that says log base B. Now this will be right on your printout. It's just not right on mine. Uh, log base B to the M, we can take the log of M over the log of B, which is what we found out there. So if it says use the change of base formula to evaluate this, okay, um, we can say the log base 8 of 254, which remember what that means. It means what exponent do I have to put on 8 to get 254 is actually just going to be the log of 254. And this is base 10, remember, divided by the log of the original base, which is 8. So when we punch that in, we go 254, hit our log button, uh, divided by 8, hit our log button, equals 2.66 or approximately 2.7. Now, let's just punch that in and see, is 8 to the 2.7, is that equal to 254 or approximately 254? Let's have a quick check. Uh, we take 8 and we raise it to 2.7. And that is not quite, but it's close. We remember we rounded that up, that 2.7 we rounded up. Uh, if I wanted to, I could um, save the stuff in my calculator and I'd get this exactly. Um, I could say 8 uh, to the exponent and then in brackets I'm going to do 254 log, 254 uh, log divided by 8 log end my brackets, hit equals, and then that's basically 254 up there. Okay, But because we rounded it, it's not perfect. But for most of our purposes, it's close enough. Last one. This is an actual application question. This says an investment of $2,000 earns 2% interest compounded yearly. A formula represents this situation. So here's our formula. This is the amount that we're getting. This is the amount we invested. This little bit in here tells us that that's our 2% interest. And this out here is our year. Years invested. So this is um, the rate of interest. This is called the principal that we are investing. And this is the amount earned. So A is the amount invested and N is the number of years. How long before the investment doubles? Well, the investment is $2,000 now, so we want A to be $4,000 equals $2,000, 1.02 to the exponent n. Now, the first thing we have to do is get rid of this 2,000, so we're going to divide both sides by 2,000. And what we get is 2 equals uh, 1.02 to the n. Now, the fact that this here is 2 and that doubling means timesing by 2 is no coincidence. Um, this is 2 for a reason. Uh, I could I'm, could have just ignored that and not giving you, given you a number there at all and said how long does it take your investment to double and this number into this number will always be 2 if you're doubling uh, or tripling it will always be 3 or etc cetera, etc cetera, whatever you um, whatever you decide. So now we want to figure out what that n is. So we figure out how many years it takes before our investment doubles. We're going to take the log of both sides. So I'm going to take the log of 2. And remember, that's 10. So this actually means what exponent do I have to put on 10 to get 2? And then over here, I'm going to take the log of this side. The n comes out in front by power law, and I have 1.02. Now to get the n completely by itself, we're going to divide both sides by the log of 1.02 so that that cancels with that. But this side has to be divided by the log of 1.02 as well. And that's going to give me n all by its lonesome over here. And I have to do on my calculator 2 log divided by 1.02 log and my answer is 35. So it will take 35 years to double your money. Not the greatest investment, um, so therefore it will take 35 years to get 
to double. And there we have it. And this video has gone on long enough, so I'm going to stop it right there.